This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at CosmicPotato.com. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. I am Iron Man. That's a big point. Pizza Dude's got 30 seconds. And welcome to World War G episode 228. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. And I'm Colton. Okay, let's get right into it here. So, uh, no, this isn't Captain Game Show, but I wanted to start off with a little bit of uh, kind of a game here. Not so much a game, more of a, I want to test your guys' TV knowledge. I really feel I'm like this. I, I feel like this came from like uh, Cheers. Because you've been on this Cheers kick lately. I have, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that didn't influence it, but also didn't not influence it. Do we have to uh, buzz in, or can we just like no. say it? Okay. Have to shout it out if you know it. Bah! So, AJ's going to get all these. Well, maybe. <clears throat> uh, so, here's what we're going to do. I have 15. This is from Mental Floss. It's 15 of the best TV spinoffs. Okay. So, what I'll do, I'll name the show... You guys give me the show that it spun off from. But here's the other thing. Okay, I don't mind cribbing from Captain Game Show. Yeah. Because occasionally when they do ratings of things, they've been cribbing from us. Wait, what? Yep. What? Uh, oh, man. Out of five whatevers, they stole it from us. Uh-huh. So it's all good. So it's, oh, it's fine. We're a family. <laughs> That's we're right. all, you know, cosmic potato. Right. It's all one big cosmic potato. <laughs> it's really what life is. <laughs> it's one big cosmic potato. All right. Here's the first one. The Andy Griffith Show. Oh, man. Now, if you listen to the Mayberry Files here on Cosmic Potato, you know the show. Yeah. I'm too young for this. I just, I mean, I'm trying to think of, like, I'm channeling my inner, my grandma, she mm-hmm. loved this show, you know, I'm trying to, like, think of all those old, old-time shows. Mm-hmm. Um, Cheers. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Um, did it start just, like, Don Knotts? No. No. Actually, the show that spun off from didn't even have Don Knotts in it. What? Yeah. There's where they went wrong. I know. <laughs> what was it? It was a show called um, the Danny Thomas Show. Yeah, that was my next choice. Uh, sure right? it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did yeah. you did you ever watch it? Uh, I watched that episode. Yeah, because I had to for the podcast. Okay. <laughs> really funny. Uh, next, <clears throat> so nobody gets that one. Next, Green Acres. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know this show was a spinoff till I read this list. Golden Girls. No. Green Acre Dredden from 65 to 71. Golden Girls was in the 80s. Huh. Although I see where you're going. Green Acres does sound like a retirement home. Right? Uh, little yeah. House? Nope. Not Little House. Prairies, Green Acres, yeah. you know. Yeah. I see the connection. <laughs> it came from the show Petticoat Junction. I know the show Petticoat Junction. I didn't know it was a spinoff. Never seen the show. Never heard go. of the show. <laughs> All right. You might get this one. Might get this one. The Jeffersons. Moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Moving on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. I don't think this is helping. No. Uh, Is it uh, (laughs) mm, Family Matters? No. You're close, though. I think you're you're on the right track. All right. It's from All in the Family. Okay. Yeah, make yeah, that yeah. make kind of makes sense. So close, I know. Um, Man, number we, four. Can we pick some like newer ones. There's, they're coming. They're coming. More recent ones are coming. It's, it's like Rugrats all grown up. Oh, Rugrats. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> 
Number four, mod. <laughs> also right, from seventy two to seventy eight. Mod. Um, if I had to guess, the nanny. Nope. Uh, the nanny was in the nineties. No. <laughs> I all, thought she didn't. She have like a mom named named Maud or I don't think so. I don't know. I never watched the nanny. Is it the Beverly Hillbillies? Nope. Uh, it's also all in the family. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. A little bit of a uh, trick trick question there. Wow. Thanks a lot, John. Number five. <laughs> happy days. This is also a little bit of a trick question. A little bit. You know, I've never even heard of any of these spinoffs. That's how young I am, Troy. Uh, you've never heard of Happy Days? I've never Sunday, heard of Monday, Happy Monday, Days. Sunday, Monday, Happy Days, no. Tuesday. Ron Monday. Howard? Arthur, I'm, I'm the Fonz. The Fonz. Boy, all of these the Fonz. Like... I'm 34. Oh. I know all these. Okay, but these came out more than, like, like I'm 25 years old right now. Yes. These came out more than 25 years ago. What's your earliest memory? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not like these shows just disappeared. They're still around. That's how I saw them. They all ended before I was born. Look, my dad was a drugstore cowboy. He didn't watch the, these kind of shows. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> all right. Anyways. Happy Days. Happy Days, was it? Yeah. Well, that spin off from... It was a, a standalone The Fonz show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of spun off. This, this is what they said. Now, Wait, was it Richie of... Cunningham's? Was it his sister? Like, because she had another show by herself, right? That spun off from Happy Days. Joni Loves Chachi yeah. spun off from Happy Days. Okay. Yeah. Um, the success of 50s nostalgia hits like Grease and American Graffiti led ABC to reconsider the series, which meant at the time Happy Days was actually a spin off from the movies Grease and American Graffiti. Especially okay. American Graffiti, because I believe it had Ron Howard in it. And yeah. It, yeah. Gotcha. So okay. that was a little bit of a trick question. Oh, man. <laughs> we're not even getting the straightforward <laughs> ones. What do you make you think we'll get the trick question? Laverne and Shirley. Number six. Three's Company? Nope. Also Happy Days. Was it really? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Okay. Here you go. Something recent. <laughs> the Simpsons. Family Guy? No. American Dad? No. 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 Simpsons the, was Simpsons is way before that. Yeah, way before those. Um Wait, so we're trying to get the spin off of it. Where it originated The show that the Simpsons originated on. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to guess the spin offs from that show. Reverse order. Where that where Happy yeah. Day like where Happy Days got the idea from. Yeah. Or where these other shows... Okay, gotcha. The show it spun off from. Yes, okay. So where did The Simpsons... What show did it come from? Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. The Tracy Ullman show. They were little shorts in between. Mm. No, uh. I've never heard of. Uh, okay, yeah. here you go. <laughs> Number eight, <laughs> Frasier. Cheers. There you go. Booyah! You did it. I did it. Cracked the code. Point on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, Xena Warrior Princess. Hercules. Boom! Oh, On a roll. Butter, butter. Number ten, Daria. Hmm. This I... came out when you were alive, by the way. What, Daria? I don't even think I've heard Chances of Chances are, I mean, you were, what, three? But still. <laughs> you were alive. <laughs> Weren't you watching this show? It, 97 to 2001. Daria was on MTV. That gives you a hint. I don't even know what... Uh, You'd know it if you saw it, I'm sure. Maybe. It was a show I never watched because it looked dumb. <laughs> uh, so was the show it spun off from, also dumb. Saved by the Bell? No. Uh. Beavis and Butthead. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah. Oh, Daria, because she's got the beanie. The yeah, yeah, okay, I think I can think of the... Yeah, you'd, you'd know if you saw her. Okay, this one's going to be really difficult. Ready? Number 11, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Law and Order. There you go. Oh, man. <laughs> you got one. Way to go. Number 12, Angel. Buffy the Buffy Vampire, Vampire Slayer. Slayer. Boom. Yep. I think you started it before I did. Number 13, NCIS. NCIS Miami. No. Oh. That was a spinoff from that show. CSI. Nope. Law and Order? Nope. 
Yeah. You're on the right track, though. Law and Order SVU? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a bunch of them, yeah. <laughs> so many. You could keep going. Um, Where's the Utah one? Without a Trace. Nope. <sighs> Jag. Oh, it's a spinoff from Jag. Yeah. Okay. Huh. About this. Number 14, The Colbert Rapport. Stephen Colbert. I'm thinking Those of... have a spinoff? Mm-hmm. What the... This one did. From... Where did it come from? What show did it come from? Is it animated? No. Uh. No, it's a live-action talk show that came from another live-action talk show. I keep wanting to go back to... I can't think of the name. The guy's name, though. Yeah. I'm not sure. I couldn't guess The it. Daily Show okay. with Jon Stewart. Mm. All right. The last one, number 15, Better Call Saul. Breaking Bad. There you Man. go. Yep. That was too easy. That wasn't too bad. I mean, those first few. Okay, but they said good shows. <laughs> they are good shows. <laughs> All those other shows? The yes. spinoffs? Angel? You watched that one? I w- I've watched did a you couple watch, episodes. Did you watch Angel. Jag as well? No, my mm. mom watches Jack okay. all the time. I can think of so many other like like Andy Griffith's show, great show. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Jefferson's great show. It's because you've never seen it doesn't mean it's not a good show. Okay, all right. Of the shows on this list, the ones that I have watched are The Simpsons. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I've I've never seen Angel. I've never seen. Law and Order SVU. Maybe sometimes like glimpses when my grandma was watching it or something. But. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. It'll be interesting to see like uh, spinoffs like down the road from these other shows. I mean, they're starting to eventually do that um, if they've got some success. But like you were saying um, with um, Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. But I feel like sometimes they grasp at straws and try to turn... Like the Alfred one that they're coming out with now, yeah, that just yeah, yeah. seems so stupid. Like, I don't know. Well, and Malcolm in the Middle is a spinoff of Breaking Bad as well. <laughs> or is Breaking Bad a spinoff? No, because Walter joins the Witness Protection oh. and he goes and lives yeah. in rural California. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that theory. <laughs> It was way ahead of its time. <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, speaking of <laughs> sequels and add-ons to stuff that like just needs to die, Sylvester Stallone. You're is saying pl- Sylvester Stallone needs to die. Basically. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think actually in the next installment, or like, I guess because he's planning a couple more, um, Sylvester Stallone's planning a new Rocky movie separate from Creed III. Um, I think this one he's going to get cancer. Or like have suffer from like a tumor. Tumor. He started a that tumor. Creed, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, didn't he have cancer? That was the plot. In Creed? No, he's actually gonna pass away though from it. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank goodness. No, no that's that's movies. that's not the case. But he is planning another one. Which like brings up two things in this article. There we're getting a third Creed. Um, which I don't even know what direction they would go with this one. I didn't even see the second I one. I think it's probably gonna be about Someone needing to get boxed out. Like, okay, this guy, we need to fight him. Yeah. That's probably what it's going to be about. Yeah, that's... I'm just taking a wild guess. Have you seen the first one? Have you seen the first one? Yeah. That one was great. The second one, it was pretty decent. Like, I hope with this third Creed, they, I don't know, end it. Well, the thing... Correct me if I'm wrong, but the first one, Creed, Sylvester Stallone didn't really have much to do with it. He was... No, he was in his corner... Like well, he I didn't know. want to be in this corner what, at first. I know but what I'm saying is I'm saying not in I'm not saying the character, I'm saying the it, creative the, director. Yeah. No, he he was uh well one of the executives. Okay, but he was an executive know. producer, so yeah. he's mm, not really involved. Right. But he wasn't like the director or writer or anything and yeah. Oh, can you imagine the scribbles that they have to, like decipher? But I, th- <laughs> but I think he was on Creed too, right? Wasn't didn't he have a lot more creative input? I think he did, and that's maybe why it didn't do so well. Is that, what, yeah. is that what we're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. I thought Creed was a good film, yeah. but I'm I'm tired of Michael B. Jordan. 
because mm. he is very one note. Like he plays the same character in every single movie, yeah. and it's always just a thug, and I don't enjoy that. Mm. It's the same reason why I didn't like Joker and Suicide Squad because he played basically Michael B. Jordan, but like a psychopath version, like just it's a gangster kind of thug. Note. Like I don't know. Mm. So I, I'm tired of the the Rocky franchise. I think. Mm. And to get another one, where. It's, it's it's gone a little thin. I would I would agree with that. Because I was looking I was looking Sorry, it up, Joel. and we've got Rocky, Rocky two, II, Rocky three, Rocky four, Rocky five, Rocky then Balboa. Rocky Balboa, and then the Creed installments as well. I to me I felt like Rocky Balboa kind of ended the franchise and kind of put a nice little bow on it. Yeah, but. but <laughs> well, yeah, and see, the thing with Sylvester Stallone. Is he keeps going back to those two wells. He keeps going back to Rocky mm-hmm. and Rambo. Yeah. And, like, he's making another Rambo film. Now he's making more Rocky films. It's like... And then he's probably making more expendable films. Probably. It's like, it's just sequel after sequel after sequel. Yeah. And yet, people still go in droves to see these films. Because they're hoping for something, and, like, you can make hoping a... Hoping for something different. Right, yeah. or or you may, you can make a trailer look pretty decent. You know, it's only two minutes of footage. Yeah. Um, and they're looking for that nostalgia and that like those that kind of that f- feelings that they got from these other ones. Mm. But yeah, and like same with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he keeps mm-hmm. going back to the old Terminator. Well, yeah, he's gonna be in this new one. I think this is gonna be like a a. An ongoing trend with these aging um, action heroes? I hope not. Right? Actually, it already has kind of become a trend. Yeah. Ever since Expendables came out, it's like that's, that's what they've done. Yeah. Well, and st- like with the Fast and Furious franchise, like Hobbs and Shaw's a spinoff, but it's a Fast and Furious movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of franchises, oh, I need to die. Die. Gosh, yeah. I'm so tired of it. Me too. Like, like everybody that I work with, they love it. And my boss is like, because they went and saw Fast and Furious 7, whatever it was called. Like, during work hours, they're like, hey, we're going to go see this movie. And I was like, I'm, I, you can't, you literally can't pay me to watch that movie. <laughs> like, you would be paying me to see it. And I'm not going to see it because, like, I want to rip my eyes out. Yeah. I'm sick of it. And then they're talking about doing the same thing with Hobbs and Shaw. And I was like, okay, can I, like, go see Toy Story 4 instead yeah. or something? <laughs> Or buy me a ticket for something else. Yeah. Sneak into another theater that's like a showtime that's showing at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand why people go and see those films, I Fast and Furious, because... Because they didn't have don't, Hot Wheels growing up, and they didn't oh. get to do that. <laughs> you don't have to think about them. They're just... They're those summer blockbusters. Shut your brain off. And, yeah. yeah. There's actually a theory that it takes place in an alternate universe where physics is different well that would make sense we've seen the <laughs> films like yeah where, where the rock can take a giant machine gun off of a helicopter and then carry it around mm-hmm. and shoot it yeah yeah because he's the rock he can do anything <laughs> and Troy's like you shut your mouth <laughs> Look, I I like The Rock, but even I got to real those some of those movies are ridiculous. So, are there movies now that are coming out that we're eventually going to see about like ten or twenty more of? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's those single ones that you're like, man, that was a great movie. I hope it doesn't get a sequel, and then of course it will. I have a feeling they're going to milk the Fantastic Beasts franchise for quite a bit. Yeah, it kind of seems that way. Yeah. Also, this uh, Conjuring universe doesn't ever seem to want to die either. No. But you can't kill it. That's true. That's the whole point. <laughs> it keeps coming back. <laughs> Even Halloween, you know, we talked about it making a resurgence and they're getting two more movies. I mean, technically, every Marvel film that they're going to be releasing is a sequel. But people want those. It's true. Well, and those are actually decent. Those are actually good. Mm-hmm. Actually good so, films. Yeah. So is that the difference? If they put together a really decent yeah. movie, you wouldn't mind getting a sequel? Yeah. For sure. If they made a Fast and Furious sequel, those I mean, that was actually had a decent story, good writing, actually had something to say besides, oh, look at big muscly men in cars. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I enjoyed the I'd very first Fast and Furious movie. Yeah. Because it was realistic. Yes. It was stuff that could actually happen. It was about street racing. But now they're driving 
cars out of skyscrapers mm-hmm. and into another skyscraper. Yeah. And they've um, turned them into that superheroes. happens on the daily. Vin Diesel's getting shot in the shoulder and he turns around and goes. <sighs> that was in Fast Five, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> so stupid. Turns around, and he's like, "I am Groot." <laughs> <laughs> Man, how much money does he get paid to play Groot? Uh, He's got a sweet gig with that. Yeah. yeah. Goes to the studio, records 30 different variations of I am Groot. and Me amo Groot. He doesn't even do motion (laughs) cap. It's like, same with, what's his nuts? Bradley Cooper. He doesn't do the motion cap for Rocket Raccoon. No, it's James Gunn's brother, Sean Gunn. He's the one that does motion cap for it. And he's just the, he's, he's the voice, like... And it, he's not even doing a voice. Troy's like, it's that's why I want to get paid to Bradley do this. Bradley Cooper's voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Show up in your, your underwear, you know, a cup of I, dough in your hands. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would not besmirch the good name of voice actors by doing that. Yeah. I'd show up dressed nice. In a tux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a three-piece suit. <laughs> Uh, it'd be like something straight off of Dumb and Dumber, where it's like the blue one, blue or orange <laughs> suit. <laughs> You're like, top of the morning to you. Uh, let's get this recording started. Yes. So, all in all, Sylvester Stallone, stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True, what we're trying to say. Just quit it. Um, <clears throat> but something I can get on board with, uh, New York, the New York City Council has voted to change... The name of Bronx Street after Stan Lee. Oh, yeah. That, that's a great idea. Um, according to the New York Post, the New York City Council voted to approve a proposal to co-name University Avenue between Brant Place and West 176th Stan Lee Way. Hmm. So there you go. And I'm totally think we on board do that. With it. Think we, like, so we have Fan X. Think we could get the, the street right in front of it? In front of the Salt Palace or whatever. Wait, is that the what's the end of the building? The com. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Salt Palace. Um, Stanley prob- Avenue. Probably not. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, I mean, we have John Stock. Yeah, we have John Stock. Carl Malone. Yeah. 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 Stanley's not really a Utah fixture. Like those Donny people. Osmond. Donny <laughs> Osmond Way. Let's get a petition started. <laughs> Hey, he's from right here in Ogden. Yeah. Let's change Harrison Boulevard to Donny Osmond Way. Yeah, let's not, actually. <laughs> Pass. Yeah. But, I mean, a, a lot of Stanley's writing was centered in New York, so it makes yes, sense. Yes, that does make sense. Where was his... Too bad he isn't that also his hometown? <laughs> Is he from the Bronx? I thought he was, originally. He's from He's from New York. I don't know exactly Minnesota. what... Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, hey there, remember. true believers. <laughs> <laughs> Excelsior. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. He was from New York. I don't remember exactly what town, but. Because you draw influences, you know, from where you're from. Yeah. Can you imagine if he had been from, like, Kansas or some, like, podunk town in the middle of nowhere? Could happen. Hey, they drew, DC drew Superman here in Ogden in one of their issues. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he was standing right in front of the uh, first national, what was the first security bank building, mm-hmm. big tall one. Yeah. Right in front of there. What? Yep, on Washington. It was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Heebie-jeebies went all out. They, were, they had big signs that said, welcome Superman and all that stuff. Mm. Yeah. I don't remember though. Yeah. <laughs> it's too fast. He only stood for a second. Yeah. All right. Um, so, you guys watched all the Marvel announcements at the San Diego Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. You just read over them. Talked about them last week. Yes. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh. You wouldn't know if you listened yeah, to the episode. Yeah, I should listen to that episode. <laughs> 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 Called out. Shots fired. Did you guys talk about Thor, Love, and Thunder? A little bit. Oh, okay. So, you talked about Natalie Portman? Yes. Let's just not do this, then. Let's skip on to well, let's, well, let's get your take on What do you think about it? Because um, you weren't here last week. The second Thor movie, I wasn't a fan of natalie portman um and honestly i'm just not a big fan of natalie portman in general but i think if she gets some sweet kick a thor powers it could be really cool Mm. she's got some like she's got some good movies in the mix um i do like that they're staying true and keeping it the same 
there's that consistency. You know, I hate when they bring in, like, especially, that's one of my biggest pet peeves with uh, The Dark Knight, um, is that they changed, you know. Changed the, the actress? Yeah. Yeah. Like, from, what's her bucket? Um, Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. Yeah. Uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal, for uh, some reason. Right? Maggie Gyllenhaal, she just seemed tired in that movie the whole she entire looks, time. She always looks tired, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, she's not pretty enough to be the objects of object of <laughs> Bruce Wayne's affection, you know? He's a billionaire, and billionaire this is who he boy, chooses. Because yeah. yeah. she's the girl next door. The sad, like, you know, tired girl <laughs> next door, but she's the girl next door. Has basset hound eyes. <laughs> Old basset hound eyes, what they used to call her. But... <laughs> Growing up. <laughs> growing up. <laughs> That's how he teased her. And then it turns out he's just like, but actually I really love those big bass down <laughs> eyes of yours. <laughs> um I love that they're staying keeping consistency throughout the whole entire cinematic universe, but at the same time it'll be it'll be interesting. Yeah. I agree. I'm just making oh, myself laugh. The legend of old Bassett Hound Eyes. <laughs> Uh, they have to put her down, like yeah. <laughs> just that. Uh, yeah, I think I think if I think because you're right, Natalie Portman does have some good films under her belt. Uh, Black Swan being one, she was really actually good. for the longest time. Like I can I can say this now, like with my with my ex, we always had like a list, a bucket list, or a other term list. Um, but celebrities, you're allowed to. Yeah, sleep exactly. With. Yeah. If um, the opportunity ever, if they ever, if it ever came or happened, yeah, um, and she was on the list, so I do have a sweet spot for her. But yeah. all right, I think she puts on puts on some muscle, you know, uh, beefs up a little bit, and I think she'll be fine. Which she's already kind of a petite, slender person. She's very, so she's very small. So it'll yeah. be more. She'll be like, if anything, she'll be like the new uh, Tomb Raider, kind of like that, more tone, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Do you think Thor's still gonna be fat? Ooh. Um, I bet he will be. <laughs> you think so? I think he will be. Or at least in the beginning of the film, yeah. and then they do like a workout montage, and then he's buff again. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> he fought really hard for that, so. Yeah, because I could see because it's going to be Taika Waititi again that's going to be <laughs> directing it, so I could see him because he has that kind of sense of humor throwing in like a Rocky workout montage, mm-hmm. yeah, and having get all in Thor shape again, or just the normal shape that Chris Hemsworth is always in. Yeah. So, are, are you pretty familiar in the comics for it? Um, how she actually comes to be? Um, because this is more recent. It is, yeah. Jane Foster has been Thor since 2014. Mm. Um, now, how she got the powers, I can't remember. I think Thor was out of action for a while. And uh, she took his place. Well, it's easy to get the powers, right? If you're worthy to hold the hammer, you're imbued with the powers of Thor. Yeah. That's what Odin said. So, so he wasn't mm-hmm. worthy for some stretch of time? Yeah, or he was gone. I, I can't remember the details. But he was, yeah, he was out, like, he was out of the comics So they needed, like, a new champion but, to kind of... I mean, she's not going to be able to use Thor's hammer because um, Captain America brought it back, right? He brought it to... He brought it back to Thor in 2013. He went back in time to then and brought it to him. And so if the timeline... Changed from that? ...continues... It's still there in Endgame. Because uh, yeah. he was using it. Yes. Yeah, but then, then Captain America, when he went back in time to give everything back, the yeah. stones and everything, he brought back Thor's hammer too. Think she'll he just had that with him because he was able to hold it. Yeah. Think she'll have like something else. I, it'll probably be his hammer. It'll be Mjolnir. I'm uh-huh. sure. Yeah. Because maybe maybe Captain America's like, hey, don't throw this at your sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't. He's like, I have don't a do sister. that. <laughs> yeah. Just like, don't Dad, throw it your sister. Okay, bye. Alive? <laughs> like, wait, what? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, speaking of things we didn't ask for, uh, Bella's house in Twilight is ava- available oh, for boy. Airbnb. So, and they do have like life size um, cutouts. 
in throughout the whole entire place. Oh boy! So you know Edward can watch you, <laughs> watch you sleep, <laughs> and breathe heavily. Yeah, there's a raging vampire boner. <laughs> I- <laughs> that can break beds in a single bound. Yeah. It's hard mm. as diamonds. Hard as diamonds. Sparkles in the sun. <laughs> I guess it would technically. Uh, if it was in the sun, it would sparkle. Ah, uh, he's. Uh, well, nah, never. Mind. I'm just not gonna say it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that does bring up the question, though: Can vampires actually get erections? Why is that? Because you need blood to do that. Ooh, that's mm. true. Vampires don't have any. Oh, well, they they do have blood coursing through their veins. Mm-mm. What do they when you drink? Break them, they're just granite, basically. Ah, uh, depending on which vampires, you know, you stab them in the heart. But they're on. But they're. Well, un- we're talking about undead. Twilight fam- vampires specifically. Ah, uh, that's true. Because okay. I was going to say, in quite a few other. It's not well, and they're not technically even. I wouldn't even classify them as vampires. <laughs> Those ones, glampires. the glampires. <laughs> yep. Um, would you stay in this house? No, 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 not at all. Pass. Because you'd probably get like tweens or something constantly coming by and taking pictures of it. It's pretty close to Forks, yeah. but it's not even like Forks set that. It's not even set there. Um, they also said that you can actually um rent out the Swan House. Like, the whole Twilight, like, all the siblings, I guess. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It was uh, just, like, they didn't even give a price for how much it would be for this Airbnb, but for the Swan House, it was, what, $450 a night on Friday and Saturday, and then 330 every other night of the week. That's actually a really good price. For, like, a It sleeps, like, 12, house. or sleeps 10 per- people. That's crazy. I have a tent that does that, and that's free. <laughs> I wish I lived in a house they used for a movie. That way I could charge people to stay in it. Back to the Future? Yeah, that'd be great. I wish my house... I would stay in Bruce Wayne's Manor. Mm. That's where I, That's where I'd pick if oh, I had a house. It seems really cold, you know? It, it does. It's like a big it seems very like big. And... I, want, I like to walk around with like bare feet, and I wouldn't want to do that on granite floor. You'd have a fireplace like everywhere. In every room. <laughs> in every room. Yeah, you just walk in, good. there's a bearskin rug, That's you know? That's not good for the environment. So many fireplaces going at once. Like the electric ones. <laughs> Which is not much better, but I'm just... <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you can have like... Is there a house that you'd stay? Troy's like, I want to sleep in the Fortress of Solitude. <laughs> Freeze them to death. Um... Back to the Future, Marty McFly's house. Well, if I was if I was going to choose, it would be Doc Brown's house because he had a really nice house. Okay. Um, you he's actually got everything set up in his basement still as well. You know, I've actually seen the inside of that house, um, <clears throat> and it, it's a business. I think it's like a real realty realtor business or something. Hmm. It's really nice. It's really big. That's kind of unfortunate because you know people would love to go through tours on that. Oh, they do. Oh really? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. They they set up tours like once or twice a month. Okay. People can go and walk through. Yeah, you know, they have like a big old Back to the Future Day and all that. Um, the only problem is, is like what we were talking about earlier with Breaking Bad. You know, the pizza that he throws mm-hmm. on like that house. People kept throwing pizzas on it like constantly. So I imagine with like um. Back to the Future, didn't they also, we talked about this like a while back, about them keep throwing like a Frisbee or they kept throwing something on the balcony? I remember I remember we talked about the Breaking Bad house. No, this is like in Back to the Future, though. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember talking about the Back to the Future house. I remember talking about the Breaking Bad one, mm-hmm. where people kept, because that was a story we did. People kept throwing pizzas on there, and Brian Cranston had to come out and tell them to stop. <laughs> <clears throat> he walked out and... It- Long sleeve button up and underwear. No, underwear. <laughs> Stop. Get like, off my lawn. He had a revolver in his yeah, hand. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Would you really want your house to be used in a movie, though? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. They'd pay you a lot to do it. Yeah, they would pay you. Plus, you could charge people to come in and take tours of it if it was famous enough film. Yeah. <clears throat> you could be making money hand over fist. And any chance I have to do that... I'm going to take it. There you go. 
Where there's a will, Troy wants to be in it. That's right. <laughs> that scene in Breaking Bad where he throws the pizza, that was an accident, right? I don't, I don't know. think it was Improv- intentional for it to land on the roof of the house. He got upset. Because it was just the it. pizza. It wasn't the box. It was yeah. just the pizza. Like, I think he was just supposed to throw it, and it ended up on top of the house perfectly. Yeah. Smack. So just like, yeah, let's keep that in. That was funny. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's probably exactly what it was. Man, you got to be a good actor to do something like that and then maintain mm-hmm. your character. And just keep going with the scene. I think it'd be yeah. way more difficult for the other people, like... That were in that scene to to roll with it. Yeah. Well, I think that it was just him, right? He well, in, in that scene, it was just him. But yeah. I'm saying, like in some of these other scenes that have been improv, mm. that have been like fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You just have to roll with it. It always just reminds me of the Parks and Rec improv. <laughs> where not familiar. You have you ever seen Parks and Rec? Mm. Oh man, I think you'd like it. Skip the first season though. Just go straight into season two, episode one. All right. But. You're missing out. It's on Netflix, so. All right. But which scene? All right, check it out. Um, well, Leslie, nope. She is feeling really sick, and they, like, finally drag her out of her mm-hmm. office to take her to the hospital. And um, Chris Pratt, who plays Andy Dwyer, which is, like, the lovable doofus, he's like, Leslie, I typed your symptoms into this bar right here, and it says that you may have network connectivity problems. <laughs> 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 and it was totally improvised. And I, I watched a panel where they were questioning, like, asking the directors and the cast questions. And they're like, what's your favorite imp- or part of the show, your favorite line? And he's like, it, the writer says, you know what actually makes me mad? Because my favorite line in the entire show was improv by Chris Pratt. And <laughs> he's like, whenever someone improvs a line that's better than yours, it kind of just makes you mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it was really funny. Um, <clears throat> so... I found this story. I thought it was funny. Uh, There's a woman who recently went to Disney World. And apparently she's upset because a lot of people are going to Disney World without kids. A lot of couples. And so she sent off a tweet. um, And I'll read that tweet. It does have some uh, colorful language in it. So I'm going to substitute those words with the word puppy. Okay. Okay. Starts out, it pisses me off to no end when I see childless couples without, without at Disney World. DW is a family amusement park, yet these immature millennials throw away their money on useless crap. They have no idea the joy and happiness it is to mothers who buy their babies treats and toys. They will never experience the exhaustion that it is to chase a three-year-old around and getting stares at... uh, getting stares at assuming I'm a bad mother. This puppy in some very slutty shorts was buying a Mickey pretzel and Aiden wanted one, but the line was very long. So I said later, uh, and it broke his poor little heart and he cried. I wanted to take that puppy pretzel from that tramp. Like, thanks puppy. You made my son cry. Um, DW is for children. People without children need to be banned. Mothers with children should be allowed to skip all the line. All the line. Oh, jeez. You have no puppy idea what it's like to have to stand in line for three hours with a cranky, tired, exhausted toddler, and I can't just tell him that we can't do something because it is his vacation, too. I puppy hate childless women with a burning passion. Oh, wow. So, I propose an alternative solution. No kids under 10 allowed in freaking Disneyland. Hmm. Because if you can't stand to wait in line for three hours, maybe you shouldn't be there. Yeah. So, go puppy yourself. Exactly. (laughs) And it's like she wants everyone with kids to be able to skip to the line. And then only allow people with kids into the park. So everyone's just going to be constantly skipping to the front of the line. That's true. Uh, Man, she can't even spell right. And she uses... Poor grammar. This has the C word. Yep, says the C word. How dare you. She needs to take that C word to C world. Okay. Where the dolphins can bleep it out. I'm I'm thinking about this. And Disney World, or DW. DW. (laughs) um, Disneyland is built off nostalgia. 
Yes. Right? You go yeah. there to, you know, be a kid again kind of a thing. Sure. Right? Um, and, like, the, Disney has put out all these different movies throughout the ages. Like, these other kids aren't going to know who all these other uh, rides are for. Right? Yeah. Some, like, some of these older ones, Pinocchio. I mean, perhaps they've seen it, but maybe Splash not. Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain. You know they haven't seen Song yeah. of the South. Yeah. So for her to think that it's only for like little kids that it's ridiculous. Well, like it's first of all, now. there are kid specific portions of the park. Yeah, and yes. you will not see millennial couples in those areas riding on the rides because first of all, they're too big, and second of all, a three year old cannot do the grown up rides. Yeah, like three year olds are tiny as heck. Like, yeah, there's height requirements, and if I'm thinking right. When Walt Disney said his big speech at the opening of Disneyland, he didn't say anything about children. Children. How just be families with kids only. I don't remember that yeah. part. I do know that they do a lot in like the children's mu- museums around here, uh, like the treehouse. Yeah. Uh, you do have to have a child with you in order to get into you know the museum itself. And that just makes sense because it's a museum specifically for children, and you're not going to be a creep coming in and you know. <laughs> So is that Watching like children play? So do you think there's probably like lots of creepy, creepy people there at Disneyland just going there just to creep on? No, people? at one hundred and ten dollars for a day pass, I don't think so. <laughs> That's no a- pedophile can afford that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have that kind of money. I'm assuming. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> back yourself into a corner there. It's like I know from experience. <laughs> uh, no, but the best part of this is people's responses to this woman. Mm-hmm. Like uh, somebody posted, uh, "Who would like to come with me? A childless slut to Disney." Somebody else. This actually makes me want to go to Disney World with a friend and be visibly childless in front of people just to trigger people who have this attitude. How do you be visually childless? Look at us. No children. (laughs) I don't have any stretch marks on my belly. (laughs) Oh, you have your kid? That's great. Look at at us. We don't. (laughs) We're going to go on this ride now. Uh, I'm a childless woman who goes to Disney a lot. I spend my money on treats and souvenirs. I use fast passes to not wait in lines. I'm allowed to enjoy Disney parks even though I'm not a mom. I love Disney with a passion. I mean, fast passes are the key to it. Even with fast passes, sometimes you're waiting an hour. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. And if you're going to go to Disney World or Disneyland, guess what? You're going to wait in lines. Yeah. Sorry, that's just how it is. Do you think that they could eventually... Not to appease these people, but just to make it, like, easier and have, like, a family, just a family Disneyland, and then also keep California Adventure more for adults. I don't think they could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can serve alcohol in California Adventures. True. You know, and they've kind of made it more adult-friendly. True. But, Um, I mean, like you said, Disneyland is just... Nostalgia. Yeah, it's a big old pile of nostalgia. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? Look... Disney does not care about your kids, your family, or you. They just want your money. (laughs) That's true. And that's what the purpose of the park is. They don't care if you have a kid or not. If you have money, come on in. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Except for you, but like pedophiles (laughs) that are cheap and broke. (laughs) Don't want none of that. Spend all your money on vans and (laughs) candy. Candy. (laughs) <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what they spend on. <laughs> and action figures and comic books and video. <laughs> <laughs> Those are for me. Podcast equipment. <laughs> They're all for me. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> all those action figures are mine. They're for me. Speak very clearly into the microphone, please, sir. <laughs> this is all evidence. Uh, all those action <laughs> figures are for me uh, and the comic books. Uh, <laughs> K 
Okay, speaking of parents and going overboard, a bunch of they, this is the article. This is it's on Nerdist. A bunch of lame parents want to change the date of Halloween. They want to make it more so it would be the last Saturday of each each month, so that then they could like you know have their kids go out and have more fun and have more time to enjoy the holidays. What their their thought process is. Mm-hmm. Um. This Look, just seems dumb. I enjoy my Saturdays. I do not want my entire Saturday night every single year on the last Saturday of October to be filled answering the door and giving stupid kids candy. This petition has already gotten like over 60,000. I mean, I don't think it'll go well, anywhere. Le- there's but... less than 60,000 or there's more than 60,000 people in all of Salt Lake City. Like 60,000 is nothing in terms of the 3 million people in the United States. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And guess what? It's a petition, which means nothing is going to happen anyways. Correct. Uh, which sucks for actual legit petitions. Look, if if you want your kids to have fun on Halloween and stay up late, great. Don't take them to school the next day. Yeah. Boom. Simple as solution. There you go. There you go. Um, this also, like, doesn't it stem originally from, like, All Hallows' Eve? Yeah, I mean, it's a pagan holiday. Right? So, with people being, like, so adamant about keeping you know, certain holidays, you know, Christmas on a specific date, um, well, you know, for religious purposes, like... Christmas also is a pagan holiday, correct. by the way. <laughs> no, I, I, I completely understand. I know. Well, well, I just think that's funny. The irony of it, I just think it's funny. Mm-hmm. No, we gotta keep Christmas on the 25th. Yeah. This is Jesus' birthday! Like, no, <laughs> it's not. Huh. Actually. I don't think he was in a manger in the middle of, like, December. <laughs> well, I think that was on the other side of the globe, which means it would be midsummer. Well, <laughs> but yeah, we can get into that, but, you know, doesn't yeah. matter. Anyway. Halloween. Let's just keep it the 31st. Yeah. It's less than 100 days away. I mean, look, if it's on, if it's on a Sunday and not a lot of people are doing it, so you gotta have to work a little harder. You're gonna have to drive around and find the neighborhoods that are doing it. Well, most of these cities, you know, on a city level, have like set parameters when you can start trick or treating to when you, you know, when you have to stop, kind of a thing. Well, and look, Halloween is already ruined in Utah. Yes, it really the is. The advent of trunk or treat. Mm-hmm. Because you know, there's hardly anyone walking the streets on That's Halloween true. night. Like it's it's ridiculous. That's true. Yeah. And like you um, see in movies, kids walking down, like, tons of kids walking down the street. That doesn't happen anymore. Mm-mm. Nope. It's kind of nope. scary. Nope. Yeah. I it's think there are... level. I think there are still in certain neighborhoods where that does happen. Um, like, maybe in, like, small towns or something like that. Right. But, like, no. Like, around here in, in bigger cities, no. You don't get that anymore. Well, it makes... I guess it makes it nice for, like, par- parents and convenient for them to do, like, trunk or treat. But then I feel like the kids are also double dipping. Right? Yeah. They, they go do, there. Yeah. They do that, and then they go out on Halloween. Which um, defeats the purpose. My uh, my parents were saying that they actually had, like, kids that kept walking around in the circle around, the, like, all the cars that were there. and Because the, they had, uh, like, a 100, 150 cars lined up in a big kind of circle, and the kids can go around. And they've even decorated their trunks, yeah. you know. But, like, they had them go around, and then the kids just kept going around in the circle until they were out of candy. And, Yeah. Yeah. It seemed kind of weird. You know, the real downfall of Halloween is Spirit, the Halloween store. Because when you guys were a kid, your your mom made your Halloween costume, right? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Yeah. Those were the days. Those were the good old days. (laughs) And now they just have, like, a whole bunch of kids all wearing the same costume because it was the cheapest one that their parent could find. Or, if... You didn't you didn't have the full costume, but you could buy a mask mm-hmm. and then make right. the, rest the rest of the of costume. It? Yeah, that's what I did with Darth Maul one year. Okay, yeah, I had the mask, but just improvise the rest of the outfit. Yeah, uh, it's pretty difficult to do like Darth Maul's like makeup. You know, it takes some time. Yeah, but you got the sweet lightsaber though, right? I did. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the best. I had like six of those. Those I, Darth Maul, those, or yeah, all you know why? Because I kept finding them. <laughs> Just in random, like, parking lots and stuff. It was weird. Hmm. <laughs> you were destined to be a Sith. I guess I was. Hmm. I actually found one in the parking lot of a Toys R Us, just sitting there in the gutter. I was like, yoink. Yeah. I really like those FX ones. 
Yeah. Uh, the really expensive, nice ones. Mm-hmm. I would I totally. Would, I always wanted one. Me right? too. I would totally put in like a man cave, just like two of them, like crossed. Of course. Kinda, yeah. Like, you know the movie Seventeen again? Yes. His best friend's house. That's what my house. Like mm-hmm. when I was a young kid, that's what my dream house was. I want to sleep in a race car bed. And I want to have lightsabers mm-hmm. and just. Yep. Be a billionaire. Um, Hear that, Emily? <laughs> yeah. Now. We're turning now. our king size bed into uh, a race car, race car, race car bed. Yeah, I'm sure she'll go for that. <laughs> um. Anyways, so 10 years ago, the movie Zombieland came out. You guys... Were, it's weird to think. I know. Were you guys a fan of Zombieland? Yes. Loved it. Yeah. I Honestly, out of all horror movies, zombie movies are probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just... I, I don't know. There's just something about them. It's really awesome. Um, anyways, Zombieland... Two is coming out. Zombieland uh, Double, Double Tap. Tap. They just dropped the trailer this week. And um, when the trailer first started, they were doing like this slow motion fighting zombie thing. Yeah. And I was like, all right, this is probably going to be full of like slow motion sequences that are going to be super cheesy. And then I see that they're just fighting to go towards the White House. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is... It's definitely going to be <laughs> just like Zombieland 1. Um, and it's funny because I was watching the trailer of all... It's showing all of the the cast members. And they're all Emmy-nominated... Academy Award. Or Academy Award-nominated yeah. actors. And it like made it seem like it was going to be a serious mm-hmm. movie. And then it opens up into that sequence. And then it showed the the girl from the movie. But I was like, who's this actress that they're having play? And then I realized that it's been 10 years. And... She's not a little girl anymore. Right. It's super crazy. Abigail Breslin. Mm-hmm. But, oh man, it was such a good trailer. And then the doppelganger stuff, yeah. that was really funny. Yeah. The only thing that would have made it better is that they used the guy from, um, Sil- what's the Silicon Valley show? Thomas Middleditch. Yeah, so if he was played by Michael Sarah. No, oh, that would I been... think it would have been way better. Yeah. yeah. Because they missed they, an opportunity there. Michael Sarah and, um, What's his name? Get confused all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. But man, it looks really good, and I feel like they're going to capture the spirit of Zombieland really well. Um, I wonder how long it's been since the first one. Do you guys have? It came in two thousand nine. Well, I mean, not like I mean inside the the movie, the like universe. How long it's been oh since yeah, yeah. That first one came out. I bet they'll keep it real time. Yeah. And I bet it'll be 10 years. And they can yeah, run yeah, around yeah. for 10 years without seeing anybody, and then they see a whole bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was funny, too, at the beginning. This Academy Award nominee, <laughs> Woody Harrelson. Academy Award nomi- nominee, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Uh, so the whole premise or the plot so far as we know it is she runs off with a guy and mm-hmm. then they have to go find her. Yeah. I mean, Apparently. I know that like in Zombieland, there wasn't that much of a plot initially, you know, but right. I hope it does have some substance to it. I hope they add more rules now mm. that it's been 10 years. Oh, and also in the trailer, they show that zombies have evolved as well. So there's different types. Right. Like, they're super fast ones, and... Oh, man, I love zombie movies. <laughs> I'm so excited. Do you have, like, a couple of top favorite zombie movies? <clears throat> uh, 28 Days Later, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that it's not really a zombie movie, but it is. I really like... Um, I'm pulling a blank. The, the Will Smith one. What the freak? Uh, I Am Legend? I Am Legend. I really like that one. Uh, that might just be because Will Smith. I know they're in the book. They're actually vampires. They're not zombies. Yes, um, but they took liberties with that because it was the zombie craze. Right. World War Z, I think, is really good. It's a solid movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Warm Bodies. That one was pretty funny. I do. Yeah, I mean, it's a good comedy. I like that you can actually Zo- use um, them with love. Shaun of the mm-hmm. Dead. Yeah, Shaun of the Dead is definitely <laughs> man. That one sequence where. Because there's the opening scene in the movie where he's go- he walks to the convenience store and then comes back home. And, like, it's the single camera sequence. And then the next day, or I can't, it's been so long since I saw the movie. But he's doing the same exact thing, but there's zombies all around mm-hmm. and he doesn't even notice. <laughs> Man, it's just genius. Because that's the way the people are, you know, mm-hmm. so zoned into their phone or the things that they're doing and don't even, like, pay attention to anything else. 
Yeah, I honestly think that Simon Pegg is a genius. Oh, he is. He's yeah. yeah, he's he's great. Two of them that like are lesser known that you'll have to definitely check out if you haven't seen uh, Train to Busan. It is on Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's a great zombie movie. And then the the girl with all the gifts. The the train that's the Asian one, right? Correct. Yeah, I heard that it's really good. They do have a uh, they do have like a um, animated uh, prequel to it that's also really awesome. I was just going through looking at one of my favorite zombie films was the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Mm. I thought that one was really good. Um, also that one that. That one with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, Maggie. Maggie. Yeah. yeah. I thought that one was really good, too. That was it. Oh, such a slow-burning movie, but mm-hmm. then like when she's kind of like standing over him. Ugh, yeah, was... and he pans up, and she's all freaky-looking. Yeah. All well, because it gave fire. you like... Speaking of Abigail Breslin. It, it gave you a chance to see what would you do you know, in that type of a situation where you don't turn into a zombie like immediately. You know, you've got a couple of months before, yeah. and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, we'll just take them off to the farm." You know, mm-hmm. to um, there was another one that I loved, uh, Overlord. Did you get a chance to see I that one? Saw that one. No. Uh, it just barely came uh, came out like last year. It was about those soldiers that go into during like World War Two, go in and try to take out a um, a church that's been used as a radio tower, mm. and it turns out there's zombies in there. Oh. It's it's great. I believe it's actually J.J. J. Abrams that did, directed this one as well. All right. No, it's it's an awesome one. Cool. All right. Um, so let's do – let's talk about the movies first that you saw. Okay. AJ, and then we'll we'll talk about the boys. Um, I know you've already given, like, a great review on uh, yesterday. Yes. But – my thoughts. Oh, I, 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 I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought That's it was. Like, he made it, those songs his own, and yes. I loved how he didn't like know all the lyrics because there's a couple of songs I'm like, okay, that's not how the lyrics exactly go, mm-hmm. but he kind of made it his own, and then it made me think like, which artists um, would I like know a lot of their lyrics that I could actually become famous off of. And I'm like, man, there's only like two or three different like ar- uh, 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 artists that I can do that with. But um, I also loved how there was a lot of other things throughout the world that got taken away. Disappeared. Yeah. Harry Potter. Yep. It was like, oh man, what? doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. No, yeah. It's been long enough. Yeah. Anyone right. Who's going yeah, to see it has already seen it. Yeah. At the very, at the very end of the movie, He's with the girl and and they're talking. He goes, "Man, I felt like, I felt like after Harry Potter defeated Voldemort." <laughs> she goes, "Who? Harry mm. Potter?" And then he's like, "Who's that?" Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "This is my way to make money." Um, he eventually does confess to everybody and just release these songs for free, so yeah. the world can like know of the Beatles. Um, but then like with all these other songs and other people that. Uh, only certain people knew those artists. I feel like they would have to create those kind of songs as well, right? Um, I did love how there was only two other people in the world that like ever that he ever encountered that did know who the mm-hmm. Beatles were. Yeah. I thought that was really well handled together. That they're just like so happy that somebody else knows who yeah. the Beatles are, and how Coke had disappeared as well. It right? was all Pepsi. I appreciated that. <laughs> that was hilarious. Because he's on that plane and he's just like, hey, could I have some Coke? <laughs> Look uh, at him like, what? I like, can't order that on their <laughs> plane. It's like, I mean, uh, uh, Pepsi. Yeah. So was it just Harry Potter and Coke? Or um, were there others as There well? was quite a few and other bands. Cigarettes. And cigarettes. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Cigarettes yeah. completely disappeared. Sweet. Mm-hmm. At least the name. I don't know necessarily if like they call I don't them think fags. So. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see um, any smoking. No, I didn't see any smoking. No, it's not very common to see smoking in movies these days, anyways. That's true. And if Netflix had their way, yeah. you know, <laughs> about that last week. No, that was the week before. Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, After the Stranger Things thing. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was two weeks ago. I mean, not, that's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, but I do remember it. Yeah, you because know, I didn't listen to last week's episode. Cause I was a bum. I was gonna say I'd probably I'd probably give that movie out of you know five submarines yellow submarines. Nice. Um, I'd probably be like sitting at a, like a pretty solid three. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I liked when he went and visited 
John Lennon. I think mm-hmm. that was awesome. Right? That he was still alive. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, you need some help. <laughs> Made me cry a little bit. I'm not going to lie. That scene. Uh, yeah. that, was, that, was, that was pretty rough. Um, and then, like, the last part that I'd like to bring up about it is when he was playing that song for his parents, and he kept getting interrupted. That bugged the heck out of me, like, to no end. I I was so mad at the parents, and then at the neighbor, and then at the phone call. I'm Mm -hmm. just like, guys, you're listening to, like, one of the greatest songs ever, and (laughs) for the first time. (laughs) And, wow. Yeah. It was rough. Did he, did he modernize the songs? He... Because my only gripe with the movie, if he didn't, was would be that, like, the world is no longer in that era of yeah. loving that type of music. Yeah. So. Yeah, and my brother and I actually had this discussion as we were sitting there waiting for it to, to start. We were like, would the Beatles be as popular nowadays if they came out with the same song, same type of thing? No, they wouldn't. Not as popular, but they're still a big indie following. Kind of like more of that. Yeah. They wouldn't be the most popular rock and roll band of all time yeah. like they are now. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we were talking about that. And I think in the movie, he doesn't, like, super modernize them, I wouldn't oh, say. A little bit jazzes them up. Yeah. Especially when he's, like, releasing, like, just before he drops his um, his album release. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't, like, you know, drop, like, a techno beat on him or anything, but... He does change Hey Jude, though. To... Hey Dude? Hey Dude. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thanks to Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, yeah. (laughs) Which, that was so great, like, to have him in that movie. That worked out perfectly. Um, When his dad just kind of like, oh, excuse me, I'm trying to get to the fridge. Uh, Doesn't even care, know who he is. Like, somebody told you you look like Ed Sheeran? He's like, I am. Oh, good for you, mate. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, good for you. <laughs> I feel like Ed Sheeran and Josh Groban, they all love doing small cameos yeah. in TV shows. This wasn't it like a small like cameo, dude. This was he played it pretty like He was in it quite a bit. Quite yeah. a bit. Which I I also really enjoyed their competition that they had. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. And then he shows them Songwriting up. Songwriting competition, yeah. He's just like, all right, let's come up with a new original song. Because as he's fly, he decides to go spoilers, whatever. Um, he flies with Ed Sheeran on tour, and he goes over to um, Russia, to Moscow, and he comes up with the you know back in the USSR song, like releases that. And he's like, yeah, on the plane right over, I just like wrote the yeah. song, <laughs> like you do, you know, and play and played it, played it for him. And he's like, he had a competition, like, all right. Let's take 10 minutes. We'll each write a song. We'll come back and we'll play it. We'll see whose is better. And he comes back with the song, The Long and Li- Long and Winding Road. Yeah. I thought that was funny. <laughs> wow. That's that, that's yeah. great. So if you love Good Beatles mu- music, you're going to love this movie. It's, yeah. It's okay. Great. I have a request from both of you because I know that you both like music. I want you to send me, like albums or artists or anything that you think someone just has to listen to throughout their life as you know i'm not a big music guy and i hate not being able to also understand references to stuff (laughs) and like you say all these the titles of these songs and i was like yeah i know yellow submarine that reference Mm because who doesn't but i feel i need to know so send those to me and i'll listen to them done well and i'm i'm kind of a music guy i think aj's more than Ugh. Both of us, but I, yeah, I, I constantly always had music going. I got, a, I got a few. I'll send you the entire Beatles catalog. If the music's loud enough, <laughs> I can't, you know, hear the voices in my head. <laughs> have you ever been to um, is it City Club or Century yes, Club? I have. And they have. Did you know that their Beatles collection is the second largest in the United States? Is it? Mm-hmm. They have great wings. Back. Mm. Go back. It's a fun place. experience it going is. there because it's like it's almost like a. Like a speakeasy a little mm-hmm. bit, but it's upstairs. Yeah, the first time I went there, I went there because I was a designated driver for oh. a group of friends. So I sat there with my Coke. <laughs> no, <laughs> Pepsi. 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 <laughs> Ironically, they didn't have Pepsi. They had Coke there. Oh, man. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, the second movie that I saw was Crawl. Now, this one, the girl, like... It's her, basically Hurricane Katrina, um, 
and there's this huge storm that comes in and nobody's being let into the like certain parts anymore um but she goes because her dad went missing her dad wasn't at the apartment complex that he should have been at he went back to like their family home growing up um and because like he was supposed to sell it but he decided not to because he had his, all these great memories to it so he's trying to fix it up and board up some of the windows before the storm gets too bad mm -hmm. the problem is is that she drives there with her vehicle and the the waters keep rising and you know the levee and all these other things are about to break and the water's rising and she goes down there she has to go down into the basement to try to find her father because he was like he was attacked by something and then the half of the movie i would say is spent just inside the house her and her um father are trying to get out of out of there yeah and it seems like everybody oh so like, the thing that I didn't like about this movie, it, like, it had some suspenseful movies, but they kept relying too heavily on just, like, jump scares. Um, she'd also, um, she sees one of her, like, her sister's exes, and he's a police officer now, so he comes to rescue, but then he gets, like, you know, attacked as well. And everybody seems, like, everybody that's not a main character or that you're just barely recently introduced to just starts dying left and right. And... It's because the main characters have plot armor. Like, they have to survive. And... See, no, seriously, because there's this part where, like, this alligator is, like, staring her down and, like, starts walking towards her slowly, like, you know, as if it's, like, Jaws. Um, and then everybody else, it just, like, it just, like, swims right at them or jumps right at them. Well, really, even though that's what, realistically, that's what alligators do. They don't charge at you. No, for sure. So, yeah. Well, it's like they have to demonstrate the killing power of this crocodile, but they don't want to... Use it on a main character. So right. they introduce yeah. these characters just so that they can get eaten. Yeah. This, to me, was kind of on par with The Shallows. That one, Piranha. I mean, um, not quite so cheesy. Piranha. <laughs> <laughs> but if, I saw that one. Did TV. you guys see The Shallows? The Shallows? With the surfer girl? Uh, oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was, yeah. It was okay. Yeah. But, like, I mean, 48 Meters and some of these other ones were much better. Um... But this one, they try to escape, and it kind of reminded me a little bit of um, "Don't Don't Breathe," mm -hmm. where they couldn't like even when they get out of the house, then they hop into a boat, like the waters break, and then they get pushed back inside the house, and like they can't get out of this stupid house, like. Um, and there's even more of them like that are attacking everything around, and there's like it attacks looters and. It, if you don't mind jump scares, it's just kind of like a cheese, cheesy one of those kind of movies. Yeah. Um, I will out of like uh, out of five, I'll go with um, flares. I'm probably sitting at about like maybe one and a half, possibly a two. Hmm. See, I like scary movies, but I don't like like animal monster movies like this yeah mm -hmm. like i don't know it's just not realistic i don't think See, enough like that's why i like zombie movies because y the whole point is it's not realistic yeah yeah but I don't know. see and i'm the opposite that's why i like movies like that where the the main problem main villain is an actual animal because i think i think it is realistic and it and it feels more realistic. And having lived in the South, I can tell you <laughs> that's mean alligators. Yeah, that's that'd be that'd be a thing. But do you think one alligator would pester you for so not that much? Yeah. No, 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 no. Kind of move on to something yeah. else. Well, it's like the whole point. Like a, a lion who is just eaten w would come across a dead gazelle and it would leave it alone. Yeah. Right. Or an injured gazelle, and it would leave it alone because it actually consumes, like, it takes energy to eat food, and that lion would probably die if it tried to eat more because of just how their bodies work. Yeah. And so, like, one alligator that keeps eating a whole bunch of people is not just going to keep going after more people. Yeah. Right, right, right. And they don't kill for fun. 
Correct. It, it, they did come to find out a little bit later there was a nest pretty close by. That that's why they were trying to a little bit protecting it. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one other part that was oh my goodness! Like this is just how cheesy it is. <laughs> she reaches, she grabs a gun. The alligator chomps onto her arm. Then she starts unloading the clip into its mouth, and then it finally like lets go. And yeah, I don't think she'd have an arm. Dies. No. Because yeah, they would be- latch on, and then they do their death mm-hmm. roll. Mm-hmm. Which they did, like, they did do a death roll. Um, there's another part where she's like, gets chased into a bathroom, and it busts through, and then she, like, gets inside this plexiglass shower, and it can't break through that, but then, like, it charges at her, she jumps up over the top and locks it in there, and then it gets stuck in the bathroom. It, it, it's just, man, it was... Well, it was, I think if you're being chased by an alligator and you go into a room... I don't think that they have the thought to be like, oh, this is a room that I need to bust through this barrier. I think that you don't exist to them anymore right. as soon as they can't see you. They don't have object permanence like that. Yeah. Alligator isn't going to sit there and charge at the thing to try and get through. Yeah. So you just, just swim around a little bit and swim away. It's like, a, okay, that, that dinner's gone. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, well. Well, you know. You win some Suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Speaking of suspension of disbelief, yes, talk about the boys. This show just dropped what on the twenty sixth Friday. Yep. Um, we'll we'll try to keep this spoiler free because I haven't finished it. I'm only on episode five. Yeah, out of eight. Um, but I know you guys have finished it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, finished it this morning actually. I, I like I watched the last yeah, episode. We finished it before either of you. That's crazy. That never happens. I know. No. And I think it's one of the only things like that that we all watched it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only other thing I can think of is like Daredevil. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But. So, uh, the premise of this show is this is a world where superheroes exist. Soups. Soups. Some are made, some are born. Um, I think they said there's over 200 alone in the United States. No, I think they're all born. Are they? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, because I was wondering because Starlight, they're... when she has her audition, says, I was born with my powers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it kind of made me think that maybe people weren't or... Well, I think what she meant there is like, it was apparent from the moment that she was born that she had powers. Oh, okay. Like, okay, okay. I got gotcha. you. Like, like, she didn't get them after the fact. Like, they didn't develop when she was like a teenager going through puberty. I got gotcha. you. Or some sort of, sort of traumatic event triggered them, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. Um... Um, yeah, and so what the, what the, the country has done, which is what, what they would do, they've capitalized on these superheroes and basically turned them into a giant business. Yeah, monetized them. Monetized them. And at the top of this business sits the Just seven. Superman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sits the seven, which is basically a parody of the Justice League. Yeah. Um, you know, the which seven you are- do have, you do have the deep or Aquaman. You know, Homelander, Superman, yeah, uh, Queen, what's her name, Maeve, Maeve Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman, um, Black Noir, Batman, yeah, yeah. I would, I, I really want to know more about him because he doesn't talk. <laughs> well, that and like, um, well, no, I don't think you've gotten to that episode. Um, well, he he only appears a couple of times mm-hmm. throughout the whole entire series. You, they don't tell you what his powers are or anything. Yeah. He might not even have powers, just like Batman, you know. Yeah, so the uh, top of this corporation, Superior Corporation is the seven, and, and they basically turn have turned crime fighting into a business. They have PR people. They have uh, crimes that – they don't really set up the crimes, but they know where crime is going mm-hmm. to happen, so they send them in. See, I thought that was going to be what the whole thing was about was this – crime setup. Right. Like, they create crime so that they can stop crime. Mm. But they have just very good algorithms that tell them when crime is going to happen. They predict right. crime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, well, you know, they they send two of them in because people love a team-up and that trends really well on mm-hmm. Twitter. And 23% more, in fact. Yeah, stuff I, like that. I love the, like, how they had those different statistics yeah. and they knew, like, the demographic for certain ones that did better and because mm-hmm. what their eventual end game is is to try to get um, a superhero in every city. Yeah. So that then they can just, you know, put an end to crime. And they also, this corporation wants to be involved in the military and to be able to go overseas. Mm-hmm. 
go international. <clears throat> right. So what, in, what ends up happening is there's a guy who has this girlfriend. They're talking. His girlfriend. And this is in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. Yeah. yeah. She steps off the curb, and the Flash character, A-Train, runs straight through her. And she just becomes a pile of goo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Disintegrate. This is not for the faint of heart. No. Language. No. So, I, I mean, it says right in the beginning, like right in the yeah. each be at the beginning of each episode. It's very, it's very much a mature show. Um, but I mean, it, okay. So pe- some people have walls. Like swearing is like they don't want to watch a show that has swearing. Yeah. Um, gore mm-hmm. and then like nudity and stuff. If nudity is the thing that turns you away, just. Watch the first episode. That's the only one that has actual nudity. The The rest is implied, I think. Except for, I think maybe one episode has, what, you, you said side boob, probably? Yeah. Like, it doesn't ever show, like, full frontal nudity. Right. Except there are, you see Wiener. You definitely see Wiener in the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He wasn't translucent during that part. <laughs> um, but it's Which really not that bad after the yep. first episode. Like, we were pretty tentative to watch it after that, but then it just didn't get any worse. So. Yeah, a lot of swearing, a lot of violence. So, back to the plot. What, what ends up happening is this guy, he tries to take legal action against uh, the, the supers and what they Huey. did. Huey. Nothing happens, of course, because it's a giant corporation. They say, hey, we'll pay you this much money, non-disclosure agreement, blah, blah, blah. Which was not a lot of money. $45,000. No. That's not. And then he ends up meeting this guy, played uh, by Carl Urban. Um, butcher. Butcher. Who says, hey, I can help you kind of get revenge on this guy. And... Uh, who goes under the guise that he's like an FBI agent. Mm-hmm. And stuff happens where they, not to give too much away, but they now kind of have to form this little group. And basically they're going to take the seven down. Right. Um, so that the world can see that these are not like gods or anything. These are not good people. And you see, they're not. No. <laughs> these superheroes are not good people. Not all of them. Some of them are f- fine. Yeah. Like Starlight. Um, I'm assuming I'm only at episode five. If I'm wrong, don't tell me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, what I like about this is... It, it's a new, it's a new take on superheroes. In a world where we're having a lot of new takes on superheroes, mm-hmm. this is like I think one of the more original ones. Mm-hmm. Um, what would actually happen in today's society? Yeah, it doesn't. Life, it doesn't yeah. feel like out of place. I think it's very realistic because, like, it shows the. I I don't even know how to quantify this, like how inherently evil people can be when they get power yeah like that because people are selfish like everyone looks out for number one Mm -hmm. for the most part and it's just people like that with superpowers or how easily it would also be to become jaded because you could initially be like a good superhero Mm -hmm. um and then like slowly your moral moral compass kind of starts shifting a little bit Mm -hmm. and other people start you know like saying like offering you all sorts of other money and other stuff and yeah you it's a slippery slope yeah yeah um but i i'm really liking it i i'm really enjoying the show yeah um, it's already been renewed for season two mm-hmm. which is good which is funny it was renewed before it even came out yeah for general audiences like they were that confident um so yeah if, if you're a fan of superheroes um if you're a fan of this type of darker uh take on superheroes kind of a more deadpool esque yeah right mm-hmm. yeah it yeah, kind of yeah. reminded me a little bit of like the watchman with that kind of dark side mm-hmm. to it and deadpool the tick somewhere in that genre yeah uh just very dark takes on on superheroes and yeah i would say definitely check it out um but again it it's not it's for adults <laughs> It's not for kids. And it's on Amazon, and it's included with Prime. Yes. If that's where you want. It's a great show. Yes. Like, my wife, who doesn't like gore, nudity, or swearing, really liked this show. So, it was enough. Like, the story was so compelling, it was enough for her to see past all that. Yeah. 
Oh, so yeah, are we going to save, like, because uh, Colton and I, we've finished it. Troy, you, you're on episode five. Are we going to give our, like, overall score rating? Or are we going to hold off until Troy has finished it? What are we thinking here? Um, Since you guys have finished it, I would say just give your overall rating. Then I'll do it when I finish it. As far as television shows go... I'm almost at, I'm almost at a four with this. It's it's movie quality, like the way yeah. that it was shot and the special effects and everything. Um, yeah, I think I'm definitely around a four as well. All right. What are what are the what are we doing it out of? Um, out bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't Might know. as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Four of those bad boys. Okay, um, sorry, let me pull up the thing. Okay, so, here's where you can find us. You can find all of our episodes at worldwarg.podbean.com. We're also on iTunes, Google Play, and cosmicpotato.com. On the social media, you can find us at facebook.com slash worldwargpodcast and worldwarg2. I would suggest uh, following us on that. You can find all of our merchandise at shop.spreadshirt.com slash worldwarg. You can also email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. Also remember you can also... Also remember you can also... Oh, yeah. Also remember you can call or text the show at any time... On Joel's line at 385-240-1692. So this has been World War G, episode 228. That has been AJ. And that has been Troy. And I've been Colton. Stay geeky, my friends. It just came out. What the heck was it? Now I can't even think of what it was. I had like... Uh, it's not really a... Pre- oh, that's what it was. Off of Stranger Things. Um, people not knowing what a dark room is. Colton, do you know what a dark room is? Yeah, it's where you develop... Old develop film. film? Yeah. Yeah. They, they kept calling it the, the red room. That's not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the red room is from Fifty Shades of Grey and is filled with S and M books. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? That like there's been so many people like tweeting about this that like a, quite a few people not knowing what it is. Well, they probably assumed that because like when she opened up the door, he's like, "Get out!" Like, yeah, yeah. Like, why would they have that kind of room inside a, yeah. a news station? Thanks for developing film, and if the pictures are exposed to natural light. They get ruined. Yeah. Welcome to the post credit scene, by the way. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Good thing I didn't say anything dicey. <laughs> <laughs> well, once AJ started talking, I'm like, oh, I better start hit record here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I w- I'm not surprised if people don't know what that is, because who yeah. takes actual pictures anymore? Oops. I almost feel like it would be cool to see like an art style where they actually did expose it to some sun just a little bit. Yeah. Kind of like... Ruin them, but not really. Like that was intentional. Okay, I have I have a question. Um, since you guys grew up in the disposable camera age, yes. Um, we on our honeymoon last year we bought these waterproof disposable cameras, and on the box it says you need to develop them within like three months or something. Is that true? Can no. You, do they last? Because I've, I've seen old undeveloped rolls from my my old family yeah. stuff. And they're fine, but I didn't know if digital cameras were different or disposable cameras were different because I haven't gotten them developed yet. And I was like, man, no. those are some good pictures on there. Yeah, I think you're good. You're good to save okay. them. Yeah, it actually, sucks. it's so hard to develop photos nowadays. You literally have to take it to Walmart and they mail it somewhere that doesn't mm-hmm. like they don't do it in store anymore. I think Walgreens might. We tried that. When oh, really? We were in Hawaii, and they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't do that. Hmm. Hmm. 
I swear, I think the Walgreens around. Did you check the ones around here? No. I think they do. Because I think it says on there one hour, one hour photos. I think. Well, so, so that one on hour it. photo is when you you submit your order online. You send right. them digital right, right, copies right. and then they print it out. But maybe I'll, I'll try Walgreens by my house. I, I think they're still in well. Walmart. There's still a photo center inside there. Well, their photo center is all digital stuff now. They don't have oh, that's actual. True. Like they sell. You put your SD cameras, card just but... in there and can print them off. <laughs> hmm. Which I've only ever. I mean, I, I I might have grown up a little bit in that age, and I know my dad. Like that's what he he'd um, do a lot of different like weddings. He was a photographer for quite some time. Yeah. Um, he'd do like weddings, quinceaneras, those kind of things, um, and. I only ever ended up developing some like from from high like from middle school I think maybe well ninth grade as well because we went on like a band tour where we had some of those but kids won't really appreciate this at all because you can just on your phone now you can just take a picture yeah. right you had to like take a picture and hope it turned out yes. good but then you'd see it a couple of weeks later you know before. see that's why I like that because nowadays you go to a family party they're like hey let's take a picture and they take a picture and they're like oh it's so-and-so wasn't looking we gotta take it and you're sitting there for 20 minutes while they're getting the perfect picture i hate it plus do you ever ever look at those photos ever again no no i'm so i i hate my photograph getting taken and it's not because i'm fat it's because i hate standing there and smiling for forever while they get all the kids wrangled up and <laughs> I, I also well, you hate would the not really, be a good celebrity. I hate the fake <laughs> <laughs> I really hate the fake poses get away from all me. the time, right? Like yeah. as if you're gonna be sitting there Yeah. Uh, like yeah, with yeah, your yeah. mouth wide open. <laughs> let's do a Charlie's Angels one. Let's not. Let's don't yeah, let's not ourselves. do that. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the time where you just stood in front of it and smiled, one, two, three, done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know. See, and I, I took one of the, uh, like an actual film camera on my two year religious walkabout. Mm-hmm. You should see some of the looks that some of the other missionaries gave me for having that camera. Really? They were like so confused by it. Like, what does this do? It was like I was walking around with like one of those, one of those cameras that had, they had to the put flash a flash powder. Yeah. And- <laughs> put the hood over and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> funny. But did your camera have flash cubes? No, oh, no, no, wasn't no. Wasn't that old? No, it wasn't that old. <laughs> um, but Taking yeah, a Polaroid. But yeah, with those, I mean, with the camera like that, you had to think about what pictures you wanted to take. Yeah, because you only had so many pictures, whether it was twenty four, or thirty six, or something. Once like it started that. getting up in the twenties, then you're like worried that mm-hmm. you're not going to have enough photos. <laughs> Although I did yeah, do you charge the flash. <laughs> yeah. I found um, uh, one of those like f- for sale, which they've gone up in price. But I bought one and then like did like a date where we just went around, like you know, got food and took pictures with it. Because then it guarantees you a second date with them because they, they want to see pictures. how the yeah they want to see how the photos turned out. It's true. Good plan. Know, it was it was pretty fun. Also, if you tie them up and put them in your trunk, <laughs> also guarantees a second date <laughs> <laughs> and a third. Um, so let's talk about, uh, the boys. We can talk up to, if you tell us the point, the point, the the point that you are in the show, then we can just talk about everything that led up to that. And we don't have to go into everything that we've seen. Okay. Um, so I wasn't really, I'm up to episode five. I haven't watched episode five. So you finished episode four. I finished episode four, which which ended, which was ended with, uh, a train, with the Asian woman beating her head into a wall. In the subway? Uh-huh. And uh, Homelander and uh, Princess Maeve, um, after they discovered the wreckage of the plane. Mm. That's where I am. Everything. That's where I am. Okay. Um, you know... It, I it, it's hard to for me to to watch this show and think who's really the good guys and who's really the bad guys here. There's a hu- they're all living in the gray area. Yeah. Like the, there is they're all horrible people. Mm-hmm. Like even the boys themselves, they're horrible people. Oh yeah. Lot less. Mother's milk isn't too bad. Oh, that's true. He's probably that's the true. which the I feel like how he all. gets roped into it. Like I mean, I know that he's done it in the past. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of... He's been trying to redeem himself since the stuff that happened before, mm-hmm. and then he gets dragged back in. Yeah, like, he's he's been on missions before with the Butcher and Frenchie and that sort of thing. Apparently, Which something... Frenchie is awesome. Yeah. He's like way cool. I like the com- conversations that M.M. has with his with his wife. <laughs> They're really funny. You'll you'll see it later on. There's one that's it really tickles me. Also, watch the show with subtitles because it is so hard to understand Frenchie. Yeah, yeah. really. I'm all right. I, I can understand. I'm okay. Even when he was talking to the Asian chick. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I was just like, man, thank goodness for subtitles because I. <laughs> I think you've ruined yourself with subtitles. Now no. you can't watch a movie without him. <laughs> no, because now I can watch that train to. Busan. Busan, and it'll be, be perfect fine. because it's all subtitles. You'll love the movie, dude. It's great. Yeah, it's, I need to watch that, too. It's fantastic. Um, They've done, like, a couple of remakes of it, but uh, they're just stuck on this train, and they have to get, like, and help the other people that are, like, located in the middle of the train, and there's zombies on the front and the back, mm. and... Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Um, but back to the boys. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, in the the third episode, get some. What did you think of the the race? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was over so fast. It, I thought they'd do like a whole bunch of laps. Yeah, a whole so bunch like a of laps. One lap, like a NASCAR mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, you know. That's what they should have done it at. It's not a high school football stadium they should have done it at a nascar mm-hmm. track i bet those tickets cool. were still super expensive and then the race is over in a second yeah <laughs> less than a second but again you know if superheroes exist existed that's what they do that's the kind of stuff oh they yeah do. Mm-hmm. which i loved how it was like even shown on espn yeah. as if this was like a legit sport or a, a legit sporting event i also like how um the woman that is uh kind of the head of uh, what's that company's name? Vought? Vought? Vought. 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 Mm-hmm. She was talking to the senator. She said, well, we'll give you this guy mm-hmm. to be the superhero for your city for mm-hmm. $350 million or whatever it was. Basically treating him like trading cards. Yeah. 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 Thought that was, I thought that was interesting. Oh, which was pretty gnarly, like how he just takes out that plane. Yeah, with the with that the was, kid on it, he's like, "Look, brutal. you know, he's here for us. He's gonna help us." Because the kid's probably thinking like, "There's turbulence." He's kind of scared, mm-hmm. but then he sees a superhero, and he's like, "Oh, we're okay." And then the senator's just like, "Oh man." Yeah. Well, and the scary part is he wasn't even told to do that. No, no, no he, he did this on his vo- own own volition. Volition, man. It's like because I was like, well, she just made a deal with him. Why is she? she well, she was him? working on a deal. Yeah. Well, they had agreed before the. Oh she yeah. She called him on the plane or something. Right. And was like, okay, two hundred and twenty five million. Mm. Got a deal. And yeah, and then you just see him and then his eyes get red. Yep. Man, that's that's a scary effect. Like yeah. when his eyes turn red, they did a good job with that. Yeah. And then it when, almost reminded me of Brightburn. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like I could see the kid from Brightburn turning into Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> um and that other that other plane scene. Man, that was which one? That was heart when they were oh, inside the yes. plane. Yeah. Inside, gosh, and it's all his freaking fault because it they was been fine if he hadn't been so loose with his eye lasers. Yeah, it and he totally could have gone underneath the plane. He could have. He absolutely. But he was could've. just. It seemed like he just didn't want to. Like he was lazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like no. Well, if I do that, then the plane's gonna bend, and you know. He's like, you no, know, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. He's just walking down the aisle like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Man, and then she wanted to at least like save like a kid or a parent or somebody, you know. And then like they saw how evil he was when they were trying to get to him, and he's like, "Get the f back!" Yep. And he turns on his laser eyes, mm-hmm. which I also like how in his laser eyes, it's not—I mean, it's precise, but at the same time, it takes a second to kind of like warm up mm-hmm. because you know, whenever he shoots somebody, it's kind of like it's spread a yeah. little bit. Yeah. It's not like just like like a direct laser beam like like you'd be shooting a gun yeah it's yeah, legit it takes a eyes. second mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's such a good show they did great with the special effects yeah that's what i thought too they didn't shy away from it and this is what i wish like a lot of these other shows would you know kind of take note get a big enough budget to actually make a legit tv show Mm-hmm. hire a good cast even like a lot of these people we don't even know who they are you know they're lesser known actors and actresses but they gave them the budget and they made something great so they have two cast members from the first episode of jessica jones oh that's true which is that the pr lady the redhead she's the sister that lives upstairs right 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 
uh, Star Starlight, she is the lady who kills her parents because of what Kilgrave tells her to do. That's right. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. It was bugging me so bad the whole time. I was, she like looks so familiar, and yeah, and that the poor landlord. <laughs> Oh, oh, he I died. <laughs> yeah. But hey, what a, a way to go. Way to go. <laughs> right? What a way to go. Oh, it hurts my head just thinking about it. Yeah. That would like that was a hard scene to watch. Yeah. Because you knew something was gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought he was gonna suffocate, but No, oh, his his head popped. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Like a grape. And she didn't realize that she did it until she stood up and Yeah. yeah. How could you not? It was he yeah. did it. Well, I think she thought uh, it was other stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking as well. Like, wow. All right. Rush of moisture. <laughs> she thought, oh, okay. Well, you know. <laughs> Man, that was a really tough scene to watch. Yeah. I do like how um, that woman. Uh, if you know the X Men and the uh, character of Mero, mm-hmm. it's basically what that character is. She has bone spikes that come, come out, out of her wrist. wrist. Yeah. Which that was already kind of rough for her because she was an A tier, you know, um, superhero for quite some time, yeah. and then she, you know, she retired basically. Yeah. Kind of kicked down to the minors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then she's watching A Train, you know, have all the success, and then he's just like, you know, yeah, I'm still single because he's put on this persona. This is his image. This is who he, you know, think everybody thinks that he is. This kind of playboy, fast running, you know, mm. loose cannon. I like how pretty much every scene with Homelander, you're like, all right, who's he going to kill? Because like, it's just mm-hmm. like, that far away. You he tell doesn't it, even care. Something's just bubbling just right under the surface. Like, this guy is evil. And he can change like on a dime. He can be the happiest, like, oh, yeah, let's take a selfie together to, like, I will kill your firstborn. Yep, like, yep, yep. Definite psychopath. Oh, yeah. With a lactating fetish. <laughs> that was a weird scene. <laughs> Where he's just, like, standing there. At first, I did think it was just, like, him staring at his own picture. Yeah. You know, I'm like, wow, he's pretty, like, you pretty know, vain. egotistic, pretty vain. But then it's like, oh, yeah, okay. But he's, like, getting off to the sound of the, the suction and, oh. you know, weird dude. Yeah. He's got some mother issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He should hang out with M.M. You should. I'm sure they have a bunch to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But I, I look forward to finishing it. Do that it, tonight. It does not disappoint. No, that's for really sure. Good. And that's what everybody was saying, too. I mean, John Irons mentioned it as well. He said that he absolutely loved it. Oh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see where they actually go with this. Because, like, the direction of, like, how it ends. I mean, they'll have, definitely have, like, material. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this this is based off of a graphic novel um, written by Mark Millar, I think. Same guy who did Kick Ass. Mm-hmm. Um, Has about the, kind of the same feel. Yeah, same tone. Yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't read the graphic novel. Maybe I should. I should go pick it up or something. But all right. Well, hopefully, you like this. If you've stuck around, talk about the boys and old photography. <laughs> But that's what you get with that's post credit scene. Interesting combination. Yeah. But it yeah. works. All right. Well uh you'll you'll hear us next week. Catch you on the flippity flip. <laughs>